In a blog post that was published in August of 2020, Bill Gates expressed his doubts that electric semi-trucks would ever be a practical solution to replace long-haul diesel semi-trucks, even with big breakthroughs in battery technology um, due to batteries being big and heavy. Even today in 2023, this is something that proponents of hydrogen-powered fuel cell electric vehicles also claim, which has led to companies like Toyota, Hyundai, Nikola, and Volvo, for example, to develop hydrogen-powered Class 8 semi-trucks. Tesla, on the other hand, is proving that battery electric semi-trucks are a viable solution and can replace much of the diesel trucks on the road today, even with our current battery technology. I'm John, and this is Cleaner Watt. While those that are developing hydrogen powered semi trucks point to the fact that battery technology is not where it needs to be for long haul applications and that there are significant trade offs with a battery electric semi truck, the truth is there are some pretty serious trade offs with a fuel cell electric semi truck as well. And the payload capacity really isn't that much different than a battery electric semi truck, according to my calculations. So I want to start off here as we do this comparison, talking about payload capacity between a hydrogen powered semi truck and a battery electric semi truck. Well, unfortunately, the weight of the Tesla semi is not available, so I don't have that number, nor is the weight of the Nikola TRE fuel cell electric truck. We don't have those weights, but I did find the weight of a 4x2 European spec Hyundai Exeunt in a Hyundai brochure from 2020, which listed the empty vehicle weight of the day cab chassis truck at 9,795 kilograms, which equates to around 21,000 594 pounds. Note that the US spec version of this truck has more range and is in a 6x4 configuration and I will give an estimate for the weight of that truck shortly. When it comes to how that compares to a diesel truck, based on my research the typical class 8 day cab truck weighs somewhere between 15,000 and 25,000 pounds. That doesn't necessarily take into account the weight of diesel so you can add a little bit to that, but that's some rough estimates for the average. So the Hyundai Exeunt fuel cell electric truck is somewhere in the middle there when it comes to the typical day cab class eight truck weight. On US roads, there's a weight limit for semi trucks fully loaded, including the weight of the truck, the trailer, and the load of 80,000 pounds. However, for electric trucks, including fuel cell electric trucks, that limit is 2,000 pounds heavier, so 82,000 pounds. While the weight of the Tesla Semi has not been made publicly available, I have seen several estimates, and Elon said, referring to the Tesla Semi in 2020 during a European conference on batteries, quote, you are able to carry basically the same cargo as a diesel truck. We think that maybe there's a one ton penalty, maybe. At this point, we think that we can have less than a one ton cargo reduction and we think long term, it's going to be zero cargo reduction for electric trucks. Using the best data that I can find, here are my estimates as to how much cargo each of these trucks should be able to carry on US roads. So we have some estimates for the average day cab diesel truck, and we know the weight of the EU spec 4x2 Hyundai Exeunt, which has a 32.09 kilogram hydrogen capacity, but we don't know the weight of the longer range US spec 6x4 version of the Hyundai Exeunt, nor the Tesla semi truck, so we will have to estimate those weights. Starting with the Hyundai Exeunt, the longer range 6x4 US spec version of the truck can hold 36.51 kilograms more hydrogen than the 4x2 EU spec version, so we need to account for the added hydrogen tank weight. So I'm going to add around 639 kilograms to account for the added tank weight and around 500 kilograms to account for the extra axle and wheels. As for the Tesla Semi, based on Elon's comments about cargo capacity and the average weight of a diesel day cab truck, I estimate that it weighs around 25,000 pounds. So if we assume a trailer weight of 10,000 pounds and the maximum US road weight limits, you can see in this chart that the US spec version of the Hyundai Exeunt 
likely doesn't have much of a cargo weight advantage over the Tesla Semi, and the available cargo capacity of the Tesla and Hyundai trucks are within the range of my estimates for a similar diesel truck. In addition to that, battery technology is getting better, so even if there is a little bit of a variance now, that should go away in the near future. When it comes to range, fuel cell electric trucks also don't have any range advantage over the Tesla Semi right now. The Nikola TRE fuel cell electric truck has a range of up to 500 miles, the 4x2 EU spec Hyundai Exeunt 249 miles, and the US 6x4 spec version a range of 450 miles, which Hyundai specified is with a full load. Of course, in comparison, the Tesla Semi fully loaded has a range of 500 miles. When it comes to how much range is needed for the average semi truck, according to a new report from energy.gov that was emailed to me by one of my subscribers, 87% of all truck freight tonnage was shipped less than 250 miles. So with the Tesla semi getting 500 miles of range fully loaded, that's completely sufficient and range is not an issue with the Tesla semi for the vast majority of cases. When it comes to an efficiency comparison between the fuel cell electric trucks and the Tesla Semi, back in December of last year, referring to the Tesla Semi, Elon tweeted out, quote, current efficiency is 1.7 kilowatt hours per mile, but there is a clear path to 1.6, possibly 1.5. Beyond what Elon said, when it comes to a real world example of the Tesla Semi's efficiency, a video was published on runonless.com somewhat recently, and I talked about this in a past video, but in that video, a manager from PepsiCo's Sacramento facility mentioned, quote, for the past several months, we've been able to stay below 1.7 kilowatt hours per mile in terms of efficiency of this fleet. When you compare the Tesla Semi's efficiency to the rest of the competition, the other battery electric semi trucks, you can see that it clearly is the most efficient battery electric truck, and it also offers the most amount of range as well. When it comes to fuel cell electric vehicles, interestingly enough, they're really not all that efficient. For example, the Nikola TRE's tanks can hold around 70 kilograms of hydrogen, and that allows that truck to go up to 500 miles. If you do some quick math, that means the vehicle is able to travel around 7.14 miles per kilogram. The EU spec 4x2 Hyundai Exeunt can hold 32.09 kilograms of hydrogen, and that allows the truck to travel around 249 miles, which equates to an efficiency of 7.76 miles per kilogram. The US spec 6x4 Hyundai Exeunt, on the other hand, can hold 68.6 kilograms of hydrogen, which offers 450 miles fully loaded. This is an efficiency of 6.56 miles per kilogram. But how do you compare the mile per kilogram efficiency of a hydrogen truck to the mile per kilowatt hour efficiency of the Tesla Semi? Thankfully, the math really isn't that difficult. And according to residentialhydrogenpower.com, one kilogram of hydrogen equals 33.45 kilowatt hours of electricity. If you multiply the amount of hydrogen that can be stored in each one of these trucks by 33.45 and then divide that number by the amount of range that each one of these trucks get, that gives us an equivalent efficiency for the Nikola TRE fuel cell electric truck of 4.68 kilowatt hours per mile, 4.31 kilowatt hours per mile for the EU spec 4x2 Hyundai Exeunt and 5.10 kilowatt hours per mile for the US spec 6x4 version of the Hyundai Exeunt. So going back to the efficiency chart here, you can see that the Tesla Semi is at the top of the list and the Nikola TRE and the Hyundai Exeunt, when you do that conversion, they're extremely inefficient in comparison. Why are these trucks so inefficient? Well, a lot of it comes down to the inefficiencies of our current fuel cell systems. Going back to that article on residentialhydrogenpower.com, you can see they've listed here that a fuel cell's efficiency on average is about 55%. So that means that during the process of converting hydrogen to electricity, you lose around 45% of the available energy. That's a big loss. Now using those numbers, I now wanna compare the cost of charging up the Tesla Semi, how much it costs per mile, per 100 miles, per 1,000 miles to travel in the Tesla Semi versus a fuel cell electric vehicle like the Nikola TRE and the Hyundai Exeunt. 
Based on my research, it looks like the average US commercial electricity rate is between 12 and 13 cents per kilowatt hour. So let's just say 13 cents. The average cost per kilogram of hydrogen in the USA appears to be around $16 per kilogram. So based on an average commercial rate of around 13 cents per kilowatt hour, with that cost, it means that the Tesla Semi should cost around 22 cents per mile. On the flip side, the hydrogen cost for these fuel cell electric trucks will cost substantially more per mile. And that especially becomes evident when you look at the energy costs for a 100 mile trip or a 1000 mile trip. Charging up the Tesla Semi is much less expensive than fueling up one of these hydrogen powered semi trucks. Now what about charging time versus fueling time? How long does it take to fill up the hydrogen tanks on these trucks versus the time it takes to charge the Tesla Semi? Well, according to this car and driver article, it takes around 30 minutes to fill the US spec Hyundai Exeunt's hydrogen tanks from empty to full, and it takes 20 minutes or less to fill the hydrogen tanks for the Nikola TRE fuel cell electric truck, according to the Nikola Motor website. When it comes to charging the Tesla Semi, according to runonless.com, referring to PepsiCo's use of the Tesla Semi, this website claims that the Tesla Semi can charge from 0% to 75% in 45 minutes. And as a reminder, PepsiCo has installed 750 kilowatt Tesla chargers at their Sacramento location. That 750 kilowatt charger number may go up in the future because Tesla did put up this slide at the PepsiCo delivery event and they talked about their next generation of charging. Nonetheless, while charging from 0% to 75% is decently fast, hydrogen trucks are a bit faster to fuel versus a battery electric truck. However, it's a lot easier and cheaper to install charging infrastructure versus hydrogen fueling stations. So while there is not a great hydrogen fueling station infrastructure available today, there are some stations, but a very limited number of them. And there's not a Tesla mega charger infrastructure just yet. When it comes to the near future, it will be a lot easier to install the charging infrastructure needed to support electric trucks versus the hydrogen fueling stations needed to support hydrogen trucks. For example, according to this data that I pulled from hydrogen.energy.gov, quote, across all 111 planned new hydrogen fueling stations, an average hydrogen station has capacity of 1,240 kilogram per day and requires approximately $1.9 million in capital. To put that in perspective, 1,240 kilograms of hydrogen per day would fill just 17.7 Nikola TRE fuel cell electric trucks per day. However, on the flip side, one Tesla mega charger in a 24 hour period could charge 30 plus semi trucks from a 0% to 75% state of charge. I don't know how much it costs PepsiCo to install the semi chargers, but I'm pretty certain it wasn't $1.9 million per charger. When it comes to my reasons why I believe it was much cheaper, back in April of 2022, a Forbes article came out. And in this article, it was talking about some grants that were available in Texas. But based on a Tesla application for those grants, Tesla was requesting around $30,000 per charger. So building out Tesla's mega charger network should be much cheaper than building out hydrogen fueling stations. With all that being said, I personally don't believe that fuel cell electric trucks are the future because the whole process is extremely inefficient. It's kind of hilarious if you think about it. Electricity is used to produce hydrogen. Then fuel cells then turn hydrogen back into electricity, which then powers the wheels. And according to the Millennium Rain Energy website here, their electrolyzers require 48 kilowatt hours of energy to produce one kilogram of hydrogen. And beyond that, it takes an additional five to 15 kilowatt hours per kilogram to compress and purify the hydrogen. So it takes around 53 to 63 kilowatt hours of electricity for millennium rain energy to produce one kilogram of hydrogen. That would be enough to drive the Hyundai Exeunt around 6.56 miles. On the flip side, a 53 to 63 kilowatt hour charging session, even taking into account around a 12% DC fast charging loss, should still allow you to drive the Tesla Semi 27.4 to 32.6 miles. 
So in my opinion, battery electric semi trucks make a lot more sense. Do let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. And also I'd like to say once again, thank you to all of those of you who support me through Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and really does help make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about how you can support my work through Patreon, I will put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.